In the first reading today, St. Paul tells the Romans that the night is far advanced, the day is at hand, and therefore we are to lay aside the works of darkness, we're to put on the armor of light. So we look at that and ask ourselves, what exactly does that mean? Well, in other contexts, St. Paul talks about the fact that we have been ransomed from the kingdom of darkness, and we have been brought into the kingdom of God's beloved Son. He elsewhere says that we used to be children of darkness, but now we are children of light. And therefore, he says that we are to walk as children of the light. So when we see it in that way, we then begin to understand what he's talking about, that we are to be living our lives in such a way that we show to the world what it means to be the children of God. We think about it on the natural level. There are lots of things that people will do under the cover of darkness simply because they are shameful or they are wrong or they're illegal or whatever the case might be. And we begin to recognize then the difference between the way that we act when it's light out and when it's dark out, because we don't want anybody to see our shameful things that we would do in the dark, so we don't do those things in the light. Well, St. Paul's telling us that that's what we're supposed to be doing all the time. We're not supposed to be acting in any kind of shameful way. We're supposed to be living 24 hours a day as children of the light. Now, as we look around at what goes on also, we can put this in a different context because the very beginning of St. John's Gospel, he tells us that the light came into the darkness. The darkness was not able to overcome it. So, of course, at this time of the year, we have the darkest time of the year with regard to what is just going on outside. And it's interesting that the Church would put the beginning of her year at the darkest time of the year. But that's to prepare ourselves for the light that's going to come. We don't know exactly when our Lord's birth was, It was put where it is because there was a pagan feast of light. So the solstice had just passed. The light was now beginning to get brighter, and the pagans would celebrate a feast of light. Well, the church put the birth of Christ right there to make sure that the Christian people weren't celebrating Christmas one day and celebrating the pagan feast of light on another day. And so it is the recognition again that Jesus is the light that came into the darkness. And that is who we celebrate. That's what, therefore, we are to prepare for. So that's why the church gives us this reading as at the first Sunday of Advent, to prepare ourselves for Christmas, to prepare ourselves for the light that is to come into the darkness. So we look at it from that way and we begin to understand that already there are people that are scurrying around, preparing for all kinds of things on the natural level. I mean, you know, you just wouldn't be the same if you didn't have 10,000 lights out in your front yard. And of course, we have to get all the presents, we have to have the tree, we have to make sure we have enough ornaments so that the boughs on the tree are ready to break. We have to make sure that everything is fancy. We need to make sure that the dinner is, we got all the things that we're all prepared for except our souls. That's what the church is asking us to look at, is the spiritual preparation. Those other things are not bad. They're fine. But don't let them get in the way. What we all need to look at is not simply a matter of what do we need to prepare for the celebrations of Christmas Day, What do we need to prepare inside where there is a darkness that is there in our own hearts, in our own souls? What do we need to prepare for the light to come into the darkness so that that light can shine and give light to everything in the room? We first of all then need to stop and look at what is causing the darkness on the inside. There are a variety of things. Obviously, there can be areas of sin that we know 
are shameful. They are things that we continue to do that we know that we shouldn't. And so what you need to do then is look at it and ask, is there anything that you have to sneak around to do? If you're sneaking around, it's usually because you're up to something no good. And it could be that you're just trying to prepare a surprise for your spouse, and that's real nice, so you're being sneaky. But usually when you're trying to hide something from somebody, there's a reason. And it's not a good reason. Get rid of it. Why keep that in the darkness? Those are the kinds of things that St. Paul is talking about. We've been freed from the kingdom of darkness and brought into the kingdom of the Son of God, into the kingdom of light. So we don't need to be doing those things anymore. In fact, we need to get rid of them, whatever they are. Right now, there are a lot of people, and we've talked about this before, there's a lot of sadness that's going on and a lot of anger because of what's going on in the church and in society. It is the Lord's church. He's got it all under control. We can be at peace. We simply need to keep our focus on him. Why do we want to spend our time looking at the darkness and getting upset about it? and letting that darkness infiltrate our own souls and cause us all this trouble. Keep the focus on Jesus. And yes, acknowledge the evil that is there. Again, don't bury your head in the sand and act like it isn't there. But don't get caught up in it. What good does it do? Keep the focus on the Lord and you can have the light that is there. You can have the peace, you can have the joy, you can have all of that in the midst of all of the darkness. That's what God desires for us. So we really need to look within our own soul because when the light comes into the darkness, it wasn't so much that when Jesus was born 2,000 years ago that suddenly the outside world became light and bright but rather when Jesus came into the world, it's the interior that became bright for those who would recognize him and worship him. And so it is today. So look into your own soul and ask yourself, what needs to go in preparation for Christmas? Again, if you look at it on the natural level, you can look around your house and say, okay, what needs to go? Well, the dust needs to go. All the, the dirt that's on the, the floor needs to go. We need to clean this stuff up. We can get these things out of the way. We got, you know, got to prepare for people to come over. What about your soul? Are you prepared for Jesus to enter there? Are you prepared for the light to shine in the darkness? That's what the church is asking us to look at. And so prepare yourself with a good confession of your sins. Prepare yourself with that true transformation, that conversion of heart, that metanoia that the scripture talks about to turn things around, to get rid of the works of darkness and to take on the armor of light. We have, if we have Jesus within, the light is radiating from within us. And so when the darkness tries to enter back in, we can reject it because the light is shining upon it. We can see it for what it is. Those works of darkness, the devil wants them to make, make them look fun and make them look exciting. When the light of Christ shines upon them, you see them for what they are. They're sinful, they're ugly, they're disgusting, they're gross, whatever you want to say. So if we keep them in the darkness, we keep making them somehow look okay in our own imagination. Let the light of Christ in. That's the time of preparation. So again, this is different from what we do during Lent. That's reparation, that's repairing for our sins. But this is preparing now for the coming of the Lord. So again, look within, look seriously within and ask yourself, 
Am I doing what St. Paul said, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ? Not just simply believe in him, put him on. Let him live in you and through you. Let that light shine through you. Jesus told us in the gospel, when you see all these things happening, lift up your head. Look up because your redemption is at hand. That's what this time is about. It's preparing for the coming of Christ, not so much the coming of Christ into the world, the coming of Christ into our own hearts, into our souls. So now again, ask yourself, if we can get rid of the sins, we can get rid of the sadness, we can get rid of the anger, we can get rid of all that, what are we filling it with? It's not enough to get rid of the bad stuff. Now we need to fill it up. We need to fill it with Christ. We need to fill all that up with the light. And so now the challenge is to look at your prayer life. What does your daily prayer life look like? Is it where it really ought to be? Are you really truly seeking union with the Lord? Again, that's the point St. Paul is making. He's saying, look, it's time to wake up. It's time to wake from sleep. It's time to get our act together. We need to live as in the day. So that means we need to be steeped in prayer if we're going to be preparing ourselves for the coming of the Lord. Again, you think about all those things you're doing on the natural level. It doesn't just happen by itself. It'll be nice if the tree shows up. It'll be nice if we have some presents. It'll be nice if we get the lights up or whatever. But you've got to prepare for that. What's it going to look like? What am I going to do with my 10 or 20,000 lights this year? How am I going to, how's that going to be arranged out there? Where are we going to put the tree? What kind of things are we going to, what are we having for dinner? And how are we going to do that? All these things you need to think about, need to prepare and get ready. If the Lord is going to be entering into your soul in a profound way, you need to prepare for that. And that happens through prayer, bringing yourself into union with him. So it doesn't just happen because Christmas arrived. Isn't that nice? That's a wonderful thing that Jesus did 2,000 years ago when he was born. It is a wonderful thing that Jesus is doing right now in our hearts and souls, if we are willing to open them up and allow him in. So take advantage of this time. And we don't have much time this year. It's the shortest Advent that we can have, so it's three weeks and one day. So this isn't like it's going to be overly difficult for anybody but we need to make the most of the time because the time is short. We need to get rid of the things of darkness. We need to put on the armor of light. We need to put on the Lord Jesus Christ and live in holiness, live in the light, and to have our hearts and souls prepared so that yes, on the natural level, you can have a wonderful Christmas with your family, but more importantly, so that in the depth of your heart, in the depths of your soul, you can have a wonderful union with Jesus Christ on the feast of his nativity.